Hello everyone, welcome back to The Neighborhood. As usual, it's your friendly neighborhood reviewer coming at you today with a review of the O Bravo Cupid. At $269, the Cupid is the cheapest earphone that O Bravo produces. O Bravo generally produces AMT and planar magnetic driven earphones, which let's just say fall into a price bracket. So how does the Cupid stack up? Let's get into it. So let's start things off by acknowledging that this earphone has been a rather divisive one amongst the community. Most people seem to either love or hate this earphone. And I think I understand why. These are very amplifier dependent. In general, the Cupid seems to thirst for current. Without sufficient current, these sound muffled, odd, and unnatural sounding to say the least. With sufficient current, however, the Cupid opens up, becomes alive, and is actually quite lovely. While amplifier current is not a spec that is generally listed, I have found that the Cupid tends to prefer Class A driven amplification for the most part. The THX AAA 789, the Giselli Archo Pro, and the Lakshi P20 all produce subpar results. While the FIO BTR3K, Centrance DACPort HD, and Bravo Ocean were all excellent pairings for the Cupid. The Gold Note DS10 was also one of my favorites. The Gold Note in particular really impressed me, but for its price, it should. Nevertheless, the Cupid sounded its most even, balanced, cohesive, and natural on the Gold Note DS10 Plus when utilizing an IE match from iFi as an intermediary. With regard to tips, although they looked remarkably similar to the stock tips, which are a red spiral cord silicone, I preferred the sound of the KZ short blue spiral cord silicone tips best on the O Bravo Cupid. In comparison, the stock tips produced a sound which was admittedly less cohesive, more V-shaped, and exposes the Cupid for its dearth of lower mid-range amplitude. In contrast, the blue KZ tips sounded smooth, more natural, less V-shaped, and offered a greater cohesion between the planar magnetic tweeter and the dynamic driver, which happens to be a crossover-less design in this case. With regard to the overall sound, when driven appropriately, I do quite like the O Bravo Cupid. I might even be so bold as to say that perhaps the Cupid has struck me with its arrow. Generally speaking, the Cupid is a warm, somewhat thick sounding earphone with a diffuse low end presentation, a punchy mid bass, and an open and mildly airy soundstage. Imaging within the soundstage is excellent, with regard to immersion in particular, but I wouldn't call it holistically accurate with further regard to its soundstage characteristics. More specifically, instrument distinction and differentiation are good, but instrument placement is notably questionable at times. However, nothing seems stretched or smeared here either. Having said that, the Cupid is most definitely a hi-fi sound signature, and accuracy isn't its most pressing concern. Instead, the Cupid seems to err towards the side of listenability in a number of categories. Like I've already said, its timbre is warm and perhaps somewhat excessively so. While I generally tend to not like earphones with this type of sound signature, there is something about the warmth of the Cupid that I find enveloping and notably special, even if it contributes to some imprecision or fuzziness in the overall sonic picture. So, while detail is most certainly up to the price point mark here, the Cupid does miss the boat somewhat with regard to resolution for its price, at least in my opinion. Micro and macro dynamics are a strength of this set given its crossover less design structure and configuration, and I would describe its presentation as percussive, yet with a soft touch to it. 
At times, it reminds me of an over-ear planner dynamic headphone in this way. Where it falls short is that on busier tracks, Sonics can get lost or become obscured, becoming somewhat muddy. However, this was track dependent. There is a decent amount of looming sub bass here, but it does roll off substantially in presence in comparison to the rest of the mix. And further, most of the low end intensity here is derived from its mid bass. The Cupid's lower mid range is less prominent than its upper mid range, which does notably rise pretty quickly. Having said that, I did not find the Cupid to be overly aggressive, shouty, or strident in any manner to my ear. The general treble presentation is clear, but notably rounded or rolled off somewhat at the top end, just as it is at the low end. Vocals sound natural and deep, but somehow more intimate than the rest of the presentation, hovering generally on top of the diffuse low end, like a rich chocolate resting delicately on top of a pillow at a fancy hotel. They aren't forward and instead are very much in the mix on this set, especially male vocals, which were significantly less pronounced than female ones. As a result, you have a warm, inviting, articulate, and often dynamic earphone that is somewhat rolled off in each direction and smooth in presentation overall, yet might be perceived as muddy here or there. Lastly, Let's talk about the build and fit, as it's not what I would call ideal. To start with, the Cupid is an all-metal construction, and as a result, it's somewhat heavy. The heft wasn't a major issue, as I could wear them for short to moderately long listening sessions, but I did notice some ear fatigue when wearing throughout the day. I also found the nozzle to be somewhat short and the Cupid's fit to be somewhat shallow. With its stock cable attached, its shape is somewhat reminiscent of a golf club, and I found myself pressing on the front of its club face to keep its seal in my ear throughout the listening session. I also found the shaft portion of the golf club-like shape of the Cupid, from its stock cable at least, to be excessively long. This caused the connector to shoot out from beyond my pinna, and it was therefore somewhat awkward to curve around my ear. Furthermore, this was worsened by the fact that the cable does not come with preformed ear hooks, and the distance of the cable from the earphone itself to the Y split on the cable is also somewhat short in its length. The connection at the base of the earphone also appears to be a proprietary locking MMCX connector, which might make using or finding aftermarket cables difficult for the Cupid. Having said that, the Cupid does come with a relatively high quality stock cable, which is balanced and terminated in a nice sturdy 2.5mm connector. It also comes with a matched 2.5mm to 3.5mm adapter in the box to be able to run this earphone unbalanced if one needs to do so. So despite its potential fit and build issues, do I still recommend the Obravo Cupid? I do, most certainly so, provided you have a proper amplifier to match it. The Cupid is warm, inviting, and a dynamic earphone with top-notch staging, making it worthy of its price tag. It may not be the most resolving earphone, but it does scale with the right type of amplification and can almost keep up with an over-ear planar. So if you're a planar junkie and you have the chance, Give the Obrava Cupid a listen. It might just be the one for you. And just a reminder guys, at the 1000 subscriber mark, I'll be giving away another set of Koss KSC 75s. So make sure to hit subscribe here, like the video, leave some comments, and follow the neighborhood at all its other access locations, including the Twitter, Instagram, the blog, or join the Discord. Additionally, there's also a Patreon. The Patreon is only $1.50 a month, and it gives you early access to written blog reviews from me. And with that, I'm out for now.